Okay, today we will study about the affinities of palynoglossus. Uh, we will study its affinity with uh, affinities and differences with annelids, echinoderms, and chordates. So, palynoglossus it belongs to phylum Hemichordata. So, this is a structure of palynoglossus. So, as you can see, first of all, what uh, the common name of palynoglossus is tongue worm or acorn worm. It belongs to phylum Hemichordata. And uh, its body is divided into three main parts that is the pro anterior proboscis, then back to anterior, uh, behind anterior there is collar, and behind collar this elongated part is known as the trunk. So, as you can see, it's worm kind of appearance. Uh, it is exclusively marine animal and it inhabits shallow coastal water and uh, temperate oceans. It is found in temperate oceans all over the world. Uh, it is tuberculous and li uh, lives in the U-shaped burrows on the sea floor. Okay, so we will start with the affinities directly. So first of all, we will study its affinities with the phylum Annelida. As you can see, the annel similarities are number one, like they both have vermiform and silomate body. Both are same body sh shape. Then uh, both are burrowing in nature. Then proboscis of balanoglossus is similar to prostomium of the annelids. Both are preoral structures. Then uh, collar of balanoglossus is rather similar to the clitellum that is found in the oligochaetes uh, earthworm. The, both ingest the mud and ingest the feces in the form of pallets. So these are the similarities that is found in uh, hemichordate, particularly balanoglossus with the annelids. Uh, both have similar arrangement of blood vessels and uh, direction of blood flow is also same and uh, this okay the larval stage that is found in balanoglossus life history is the tornaria larva it also has a remarkable similarity with the or resemblance with the trochophore larva found in the polychaetes in having eye spot apical plate sensory apical cilia ciliated bands and uh, some part of the alimentary canal as you can see you can compare both the diagrams from here Okay, apart from these similarities, now next is what are the main differences that are found between annelids and balanoglossus or hemichordates. So, the main differences are uh, the gill slits are present and uh, buccal diverticulum and pharyngeal gill slits are present in balanoglossus, but they are absent in annelids. Nerve cord is dorsal in uh, balanoglossus and tubular while it is ventral, double and solid in annelids. Okay, nephridia are found in annelids but they are absent in hemichordates. And uh, also difference in the larval stage, tonaria larva of balanoglossus, it differs from the trochophore larva in what aspects? For example, in the presence of proboscis psyllium, absence of nephridia and being deuterostomous. That means the blastopore opening that forms the anus first and mouth is formed later. Trochophore larva also have preoral psyllium, presence of nephridia, and uh, these are protostomous. And uh, these uh, hemichordata is actually deuterostomous, and uh, annelids larva they show proto, uh, they are protostomous. Annelids are protostomous. So these are the main point of similarities and differences between the balanoglossus and the phylum Annelida. Next is See, it's uh, more rather than explaining this topic, this is more kind of theoretical topic. There is nothing to explain. You need to learn all these points. Okay, so next is the affinities of, with echinoderm. So, first we will the similarities of echinoderms, uh, of balanoglossus with echinoderm and differences of balanoglossus with echinoderm. So, we will start with the similarities. So, what are the main point of, uh, okay, first is the psyllium. Both are both have two psyllium first point and uh, similar origin of psyllium is there in both. Okay, from phylum echinoderm enterocilum starts and uh, enterocilum is also observed in balanoglossus that means hemichordata. So, origin of psyllium is same in both. Both are enterocilos. Enterocilos means the psyllium it is derived from the enteron cut cavity archenteron. And uh, next is heart vesicles, they are also homologous in both. Then glomerulus of uh, enteroneust, it is similar to that of echinoderm. Enteroneust is balanoglossus. Nervous system is also similar in the form of nerve plexus. Ring is there. And uh, both have similar kind of proteins and phosphorescence. 
phosphorescence are uh, the form of um, these are the form of atp reservoirs and both they are found in the similar kind of ecological niches like both are marine in nature and they have high power of phototomy regeneration power so larval uh, resemblances are also there so tonaria larva of hemichordate it has a similarity with bipinaria larva of asteroidea class okay both are pelagic oval transparent they have got ciliated bands both position of mouth is and is similar in both and proboscis pore of proboscis silom as compared with the water pore of hydrocele of diplurula larva so these are the uh, points of similarities of adults and larval stages that are found in the phylum echinodermata and balanoglossus so apart from similarities but at the same time differences are also observed between the two so what are the main points of difference okay differences between the larval first we will cover the larval stages differences so tonaria larva that uh, has got apical plate is present but here it is absent in bipinaria in sensory hair is present it is absent in bipinaria eye spots are present that is absent and uh, this protocel is single it is paired in bipinaria larva so on the basis of these dissim uh, dissimilarities uh, they show that uh, the echinoderms and uh, palynoglossus they are not homologous or they do, they do not share any common ancestry rather it is an example of convergent evolution that means on the basis of its habitat they got the same kind of adaptations uh, due to the similar kind of ecological niches they are present in like both are marine so they show a similar kind of adaptations but there is nothing homologous they are not related ancestrally next affinities of balanoglossus with chordate so till now we have covered the affinities that means sim uh, similarities and differences between balanoglossus and annelida between balanoglossus and echinodermata now we are going to study its affinities between balanoglossus and chordates so first we will cover the similarities like uh, okay we will start with the stomochordo buccal diverticulum that is present in balanoglossus it is very much similar this buccal diverticulum of balanoglossus it is similar to notochord of the chordates and uh, their dorsal in um, position and uh, okay after this gill slits both bear the gill slits that means gill slits are present in verti chordates as well as in balanoglossus and uh, nerve cord is also present in both group or both phyla single hollow and non ganglionated nerve cord of ectodermal arisen is present in balanoglossus as well as in chordates silom silom is similar in origin both are enterocelous as i have already explained and uh, the structure and function of pharynx and branchial sac they are similar in both groups so these are the point of similarities between the balanoglossus and chordates both bear buccal diverticulum uh, uh, its counterpart is notochord in chordate both bear gill slits both bear nerve cord and uh, both have silom and terosilom is there in both and uh, this pharynx and branchial sac it is similar in both so after this the point of differences so what are the main differences between the hemichordate or balanoglossus and with as compared to chordates first of all the notochord so in hemichordate in balanoglossus this stomochord or notochord it is hollow short and confined only to the proboscis okay so it it is confined to the anterior part so in the beginning slide i showed you that uh, balanoglossus its body is divisible into three main parts proboscis collar and trunk so it is present only in the anterior part proboscis part but in non uh, in chordates this notochord it extends from uh, throughout the body from uh, it is like above the digestive tract and it runs throughout the body okay second point is nervous system so nerve cord it is dorsal in hemichordate but and uh, <clears throat> but it is uh, confined only in the collar region and uh, here it is it extends throughout the body okay it is present only in the collar up to collar region gill slits these are numerous and they are dorsal in position here only 5 to 7 pair lateral in position epidermis it is uh, ciliated and single layered Mm, epidermis is non ciliated and strat uh, stratified it means multi layered in case of chordates okay paired appendages they are completely absent in case of hemichordates and they are present uh, in chordates then blood and heart blood uh, heart is dorsal here heart is ventral 
blood is colorless in balanoglossus with no RBCs and here it is colored. Gonads, they are uh, numerous in balanoglossus and only one pair in chordates, generally one pair in chordates. Blood flow, it is, uh, dors it is uh, forward in dorsal vessel and backward in ventral, it is opposite in case of chordates flow. And uh, cephalization, it is, the cephalization is the formation of a distinct head. Metamerism, it is the division of the body into small segments, tail, exoskeleton and cloaca. It, these, all these features, they are absent in this hemichordata or balanoglossus, but they are present in chordates. So, considering the phylogeny or the affinities that uh, balanoglossus bears with annelids and uh, these echinoderms and chordates, it can be concluded that uh, hemichordates uh, bear a remarkable uh, similarity with the echinoderms and uh, chordates. Okay, so there is an evolutionary relationship between these three groups and uh, they have a common evolutionary line that begins from the dipleurula or uh, tornaria larva. So, we can say that uh, on the basis of embryological evidences, serological studies means blood plasma studies, blood protein studies, and biochemical studies, it can be said that uh, hemichordates, they can be considered as a connecting links between the known chordates and the chordates. So, they are a kind of connecting link present uh, phylogenetically or taxonomically uh, between known chordates and chordates, hemichordates. Okay. So, this is all about the affinities of balanoglossus with these groups.